Give me like a, a retailer or a distribution point that didn't work in hindsight. And like what you've discovered through that. You don't need to name anybody, but you've just seen it all. And you you have all this education in your back pocket. Give it to us. Yeah, I think for us, maybe more than a specific retailer is when we tried to go into too many retailers at once. Like we only had the team to support a certain amount. And so we would get listings, but then we weren't following up on what's the best promotional program, what's the best sort of cadence, what are our units per store per week doing? Because every retailer is a bit a bit nuanced. So unless you're you know tied into what exactly that retailer wants, you know these things can fall through the cracks. So that that has happened over the years for for sure. Is is too many retailers for the amount of headcount or bandwidth we've got. When did you guys do your rebrand? What year was it? And give us sort of impact there, because I don't think a lot of people talk about that. Or they, they also, it's specific to you, they might not even know that piece of the story. Give us a little bit of information on that one. Yeah, definitely. So I, I know it well. It was 2020, just, just after COVID, right, when that year started. So we sort of rebranded, relaunched there. Um, and it was huge. We saw a 30% increase in our sales, in, you know, like for like, same store, same, you know, promotions, everything like that. So I, I was was impressed. I didn't expect to see that. I didn't think packaging had that much of an effect on something. But when you get it right, it really accelerate, accelerated our business both on, on shelf and in store like immediately. But then even... You know, we keeps paying dividends over the years. We 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 realize now what we are. C consumers see us. There's more distinct branding. It ties into more the ethos of who we are. You know, sunshine, fun, bringing smiles to families, all of that stuff. So it's helped culturally, internally, as as well as externally. I, I like that response. I, I want to dive into it for a second. What we just finished, right? And we're coming back out, and like it's night and day. It's so weird. Like now that I physically see it, I'm just like, oh my gosh, this. This is unbelievable. What could happen here? Yep. I, and I, I've written sort of that list, like there's the four or five different things that folks should be focused on if they're going to go ahead and do this. And that item kind of rose to the top. When, when somebody would tell me like, you really need to focus on your design and packaging, it kind of went over my head over the years. I knew it was significant. I knew it was important, but it wasn't until somebody had actually not only done it for us, but like even when I've seen it for you guys and a handful of others, it's such an important piece of the business. Yeah, I agree. I think it's, you can still build a good, biz, a decent business with, with you know, not the best packaging. We all do that. We, we uh, you know, sort of we reiterate, we learn, we change, we develop. So that, that's part of, of it. So I don't think it should be a thing that holds you back. But I will say that when you get it right, it does make a meaningful, meaningful difference. And that's the balance between those those elements. Give us just the the summary of when you started, just for, for everybody who, who doesn't know which they should, just, just the 30 second window of when it started, how you got into it, and then where you're at currently with the business. Yeah, so as I said, started about 10 years ago. I started it in Australia. I've always worked in CPG. So that's sort of been my background, but wanted to, um, 10 years ago in Australia, I, I was on a diet trying to clean up what I was eating but my kids could sniff out you know a healthier snack a sort of a, a kale chip or anything like that so but well, how do I make a product that they'll think is cool they're happy to eat but but me as a parent is happy happy to give them I thought well you know Pringles is the I iconic sort of snack if I can wait make one look like that you know they'll be happy to eat it so that's sort of where that process went from and then we launched in Australia but got more and more interest out of out of the US so I launched into 30 Whole Foods in Northern California actually was our first step into the US and it became obvious that, that that really is the market we should focus on, you know, 350 million people versus 24, 25 million in Australia. Um, and so, yeah, that was about nine, eight, nine years ago now here in the US and now we're in 20,000 plus stores across the country, most retailers, still, still you know, early days, but it's it's going really well. Oh, so you're from Australia. That's interesting. Your accent, I thought you were from San Francisco, but it, that's, yeah. a, that's a whole separate <laughs> thing we could talk about offline. It's yeah. all good. So, okay, got it. So you're not from San Francisco. Okay. So let's, I, I want to I pull out some cool stuff now because, you know, I like to go different uh, as far as these, these episodes. Over these years, like you learn so much, you, you, you win some, you lose some, and everything just back and forth. Give us like that one stage of the business where you said this is this is working now 
you know, because again, early, you could go back and go, I don't, is this working? You move, you come over, you're like, I'm now in the US. I'm, is this working? Is it not working? The ups, downs and arounds, you're raising up. It, was there a moment when you said, ah, this this is working? It could even be just market fit stuff. It could be the retailer, specifically as far as velocity and the like, where things things had the, 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 basically it had turned on. Yeah, I think there's been a couple of moments, even right from the very start. When I wanted to launch in the US, I went to Expo West. I got some little crummy table out in a passageway somewhere and, and put my products on. And people would literally stop and, and come back and say, is this what I think it is? And try and say, this is amazing. Right. So even right from then, whether I could do it or not, whether sort of we could make this happen was another whole thing. But but I knew there was a demand for, for, for the product and what I was, was selling. And so that, that gave me the confidence to to move in into the US. And then there's been various points throughout throughout this. You know, I think our packaging change was one when we saw it started just to organically grow. When we look at our data and we say, yeah, we're growing at, you know, 80, 90, 100% year on year, but that's coming from baseline growth. You know, our distribution growth is only a quarter of that. So we're seeing customers are coming back and, and buying us. They're picking us and they keep coming back. Honestly, I feel it every time I go to a trade show. Again, it's the same type. I think people just come up and say, this is my kid's favorite snack or thanks for making these or I love it from, from there. So that's definitely a lot of those like little little ones that, that energize me and, and make me realize this is this is what we've got. And then, I mean, we're just coming off the back of a team retreat that we had last week and just seeing all of our amazing team members, our employees, everyone excited and just the quality of people that we got. I feel up there as well. I think, yeah, there's, there's not a lot that can stop us now with, with the kind of people we've got. Let's talk people then. It, 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 do you have one specific person? You don't have to call them out by name, but is there somebody who is super integral in the business as far as getting it to where it is today, where you think if it was not for that person, we would definitely not be here? I wouldn't say it's necessarily one. I mean, there, there are definitely people for sure that, that they're like that. Uh, you know, all of our teams, especially our early employees, our first employees, getting us up and running, getting things in place, getting us through COVID was a huge amount. Our ops team did an incredible job of of that. And then and obviously our marketing sales team at, at the other end. So we definitely, all, all, all of the team, um, I would say, is, is a key player in, in making sure we we're able to be where we are today. So just perfect politically put, dude. Just, you're just, I mean, just, it, it's it's amazing how you articulated that. Uh, I, and, I, and I like that. Where, you know, again, I know the distribution. I, sometimes I'll even send you photos. I sent you one th this weekend. I thought it was, yeah. I thought it was funny because the two kids, which were not my own, they were just hanging there. They're the Rugrats hanging with us, right? The, 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 we walked into Whole Foods and one, this is matter of fact, one grabbed your canister and one grabbed my bag and said, and they both said, these are my favorite snacks. And I was like, oh, that's my, that's a, my homies. That's my homies. We're yeah. going to send them a picture that's right awesome. now. Take a picture. And so I understand that sentiment. It's fun uh, to get somebody to validate what it is that you're doing, right? Um, it's, I always say it's kind of like it, it definitely keeps you going because it's so difficult. All the other things that have to do with the business are so difficult. It's those little moments that really get you through. So I, I, I like that piece that you had spoken about, about trade shows and people coming up to you and stuff like that. Do you... Um, do you consider yourself needing to go to these trade shows continuously go and will you keep going? And if so, what is the purpose of them now as far as the, the where you're at with the business? Yeah, it's definitely a hot topic, right? But everyone's chatting about it. The, the cost of, of these shows are getting you know out of hand, Expo West, and particularly as our team gets bigger, we want more people there and that, that's a huge thing. So the ROI on it is really hard to justify on a traditional show like like that. Um, how we're starting to think about it a bit more as well, being a half remote hybrid team is, okay, can we can we also use this as team building, as bringing the team in together and do that? We're going to do that anyway, so why not do it around a trade show from, from there and connect with people? And as well, it's also thinking about, Maybe we should be doing some different shows. So let's go out. I mean, we just did the sweets and snacks show, which which is one I like. We start talking to conventional buyers, the conventional retailers. So do we need to start doing more shows where we are the new kid on the block? Whether that's Nax, you know, the convenience show, or or other shows there where 
it's not somewhere we go every year and talk to the same people. These are these are totally new people and new customers. So that's how we're thinking about trade shows moving forward. I like that you bring up conventional because it's one of the pieces that I again I just wrote about. Like there there is there's there's just some brands in or products that don't fit conventional. Like for us, I I I've been saying that there's the lessons learned for us. We're we're not a conventional brand. I mean, one of price point and the like, but it just doesn't speak that language. And I've always thought you could definitely tell me if I'm wrong. I've always thought that the good Chris can live there. It can live in both places, which is a really great thing to have. Right, provides a lot more sort of equity to the brand, um, especially from yeah. outside investors and or acquires. Like, was that on purpose, or do you think things fell into place? just organically in some way yeah no it's been very deliberate so we launched nationally with walmart before we launched nationally with whole foods so it, you know that's been six seven years now it's, it's been in our dna of dealing with conventional customers going out there it's been more about timing and just getting things right and bandwidth back to our earlier conversation rather than sort of oh this is now we're going to go into to conventional it's it's how we think about our consumer that Who's that Texas mum of three that's just starting their journey into better for you? I mean, we're a, what we call here a gateway snack into better for you, right? Like, so you might not be ready to, to eat a kale chip from day one, but you'll start with us, hopefully have a great experience. We really enjoy it. And then you can move down that path and, and feel more comfortable about trying better for you things. And so that's where we, we sit on that spectrum. And so we think that's those consumers shop at conventional. And so we need to be there as well. That's a, that's a really well put statement i've never thought about it or at least had you say that and it's something that you are forthright about meaning you recognize that this product may not be at the top end of better for you it might sit in the middle and you're part of that journey and you could speak that language to a customer yeah we have three three pillars about what makes the good chris company it's it's drilled into into us a good taste, good ingredients, good vibes. And we very specifically put good taste first, even above good ingredients. So yes, we're a health company. We want to try and do the best we can, but we'll never sacrifice taste. This thing has to taste better than anything else out there. And then we try, and our job is to try and clean up the ingredients as much as we can without sacrificing taste. And then good vibes, you know, feeling good about ourselves, giving back to charities, to our new Trixie's Tribe charity, things like that is, is a big part of what we do as well. Got it. We, we have an extra, we'll, we'll extend an extra minute, by the way, because I'm going to be able to cut that middle. Um, so I, I, I've got it. I really, I like that a lot. Um, and, and so next phase, you did launch a couple products. I think this is important for those that, that you had this core product um, and it was identifiable because of the canister. And you did that for quite some time before you then offered the second product i remember it like we would talk about it and you're like yeah I, they don't i don't really they don't really like the idea you know you went, went to the balls right and then most recently you went into a uh into an actual film bag uh for chips what was it that made you do it is there any sort of you know second guessing still that comes from that or, or what what's the playbook there yeah, no, I, we, I'm very confident with that. I think it's going to be a very big, strong part of our business. Really, we look at ourselves, how do we be the snack of choice for millennial families now? Whether that's a bag, whether that's a canister, whether that's a cheese ball, we have a format there for, for them that meets their requirements. Um, but really what for, you know forced me to take that step in there was just seeing this white space. There was just nobody doing a, a Ruffles-like uh, better for you chip out there. Everything was kettle. My kids didn't like kettle. It's hurting their mouth. Consumers kept telling us that. And so we thought, like, we have to fill this, this space. There's a genuine hole. And that drove it rather than, oh, let's slap my logo on a bag of chips and put it out here, slap my logo on this, put it out there. Um, I think that's the important distinction. I like it. Um, give us a close out here. I like these short. Next 12 to 18 months, you guys, because you're, again, you're, you're, you've got a a bigger business so you guys get to plan a little further out and have some real you know uh, topics to, to address as far as where you want to go next what is the plan let's say 12 to 18 months things that you can't actually talk about as far as where you guys are going to go yeah 
it's just about going deeper where we are. Like that's our core focus. All right, we've got two SKUs into this retailer. Right, let's get four. Let's be performers. Let's be a supplier of choice. Let's be hitting all of our velocity goals and just be going deeper and outperforming everybody else. I think, you know, it took me four or five years to launch another, you know, vertical. It'll be another sort of three, four years before we look at that again. It's just really tidying up what we've got now.